Hey everybody, it's Lee here. Uh, today, we're going to work on the 32 again. So in the last video, we went over how we determined this was from a bigger truck, like a 32 double B, and this was just a regular 32 passenger car frame, and they got, they were spliced together here, and it was really weird and really ugly. So we cleaned up the profile, got that going straight, re-welded it, and put a nice fish plate in there. Uh, since that video, I've gone ahead and finished the other side. I didn't film that because you guys already know how that worked. Uh, now we're going to move on to the front here. So here's the original 32 Ford cross member. And it's had some repairs here and there. It's got some holes. Actually, I drilled those holes in there to weld the cracks up. Whenever you're welding up a crack, you want to drill a hole at the very end of the crack. So I notice that the front pieces here are kerchoinked off. So I went up to the third floor parts storage attic, and I've had this up there for a while. It's just another stock 32 Ford cross member that is in really nice shape, other than somebody has trimmed all that away. That was for the original 32 motor mounts. So we're not going to be using the original motor mounts. We're going to be using my LG AV8 mounts in this. So we don't really need this. So I'm hoping, or I'm thinking, that I can just unbolt this and bolt this guy right in. So a couple other things that have happened since the last video. Um, these rear frame horns, as you guys remember from the last one, they've been shortened. They've had some weird patches put on them. They're not very nice. So my friend Gary Maxwell from Blackboard Hot Rods donated some brand new American stamping frame horns. So when we get the front cross member finished up, we'll take care of that. Uh, as well as things that were donated. Here's the engine, by the way. I've been picking away at that every night after work. I spend, you know, a half an hour, an hour plugging away on it. So I've got it painted and started detailing it and putting it back together. Uh, I don't know if you remember when we were taking it apart, it had a super weird fan on it. My friend Brian Harris, Harris Speed Shop on uh, Instagram, he dropped by one day and he's like, hey, I got a fan for you. So that'll go on there. We got a normal fan for the car, so thank you very much, Brian. Uh, my other friend, Matt Lay, Dump Rat Matt, he donated a correct spoon pedal for it. It's actually from a, a 34 Ford, but it's close enough that we could make it work. So thank you for that, Matt. Uh, Derek Eaton, in, uh, he's just outside of Kelowna, BC. Um, he saw the video where we took that super ugly hood side that was in the grill. Uh, he saw that and he got a hold of me on Instagram and it's all like, hey, I've got like an old insert. Maybe we could do some trading. So we did some horse trading and now I've got this insert to go in. As well, that I bought a uh, new rad. I got Don's radiators once again. They custom built this rad for the car. Great guys to deal with. They know early Fords and hot rods. So you need a rad go check them out they are in lethbridge alberta top quality rads for a very good price as well as all that stuff two weeks ago i think it was two weeks ago shannon and i went to abbotsford to go see the descendants play and while we were there not far from the venue i found a 32 ford hood so i grabbed that and that's just another piece of the puzzle. So, anyways, enough mumble jumbling. Let's get cracking on this front cross member.
We're going to start by just unbolting this cross member, get it out, get it on the bench. At some point, all the, uh, all the rivets on this thing were replaced with half inch bolts, which is major overkill. And I don't know how I feel about all the holes being turned into from 5 16ths to half inch, but I'll probably leave it, I guess. It's a lot of work to weld all those up and redrill them. I was thinking instead of putting bolts back in, I could put like carriage bolts in to kind of give it the rivet look again. I've slid the new cross member in place and it still has the 5 16 holes in it. Uh, I went to the nut and bolt store just now and got a bag of 3 8 carriage bolts. The 3 8 carriage bolt fits this half inch hole really nicely. So I'm going to drill the cross member holes out to 3 8 and then put these guys in there and that should look a lot better than these big honking guys that were in there before. Okay, these guys are all in and all nice and tight. Now that sounds like it would be really simple, but it wasn't. It was it was actually quite difficult. Let me show you why here. So these three bolts up in here were so hard to get at because you can't put a regular socket in there because it's too shallow, physically won't fit in there. So if you put a shallow socket, I didn't have a quarter inch drive shallow, and we had a three eighths drive and the three eighths ratchet would hit here. So that wouldn't work. You couldn't get a flat wrench in there because there's just not enough room. So I have this little flex head, but it's only a quarter inch. But like I said, I didn't have a quarter inch 916 socket to fit in there. And uh, I called around to a couple tool places. Nobody had anything, but I had two deep ones. So Shannon suggested that I cut one down. So I did, I took, I felt, I was a little bit reluctant to do it at first, but then decided to just do it anyways. But yeah, I cut a 916 socket, shortened it, a 916 snap on one, just to get it to, see if I can get it on there, just so I could get in there and tighten it. So yeah, that took like, I don't know, an hour to tighten this cross member up. But the cross member is done. So everything from here forward is done. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I got some carriage bolts to replace these guys. So we're gonna do that. I've already bolted the rest of the K member in when the car went, when I bought the car, when I drove it home, there was only like four bolts in this entire K member and none of them were tight. So other than these guys, obviously. So yeah, they're all in there and tight now. We got three across there, three across there, the one under the bottom there. So we'll pull these out, put some carriage heads bolts in there. Then we can finally move on to the back. So moving on to the back now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, I got these frame horns from Frank Gary Maxwell at Blackboard Hot Rods. So they're going to go on somewhere around there. I think the first thing I'm going to do before we get started with that is pull this rear cross member out just to get it out of the way. It's bolted in with 
numerous different style bolts. So we'll take that out and then we can start fitting the frame horns. So with the rear cross member out, the first thing I did was kind of, I just took a, a big hammer and a dolly and kind of flattened this out a little bit to get it roughly back into the shape that it needs to be. So now we can start figuring out where the frame horn's gotta go. Basically what I've determined, grab the right one here, is this hole right here. Let me bring the camera in here so you can see what's going on. Can you see now? I think you can see now. So this hole here is this hole here. Right there, like that. So what that means is that we have to cut this off right there and then weld this guy on. Sounds simple enough, except for we've got this weird little patch right here. I don't know what's underneath there. This weld has been ground so thin that the patch is starting to come off. And then on the inside, we've got this weird little patch right here, which is gonna kind of be right where we were cutting. So I think my next step right now is I'm gonna take this patch right off and see what's behind there. Then from there, <clears throat> when we got this all like cleared away, we can make our mark It'll probably be around there somewhere. Cut that off and then see what all we need to do at that point to splice them together. So that was really easy to get off. This is literally just like a piece of tin that somebody used to cover up just a really ugly repair. And instead of just hammering it flat and then welding it up. They welded up what looks like it was just a broken piece. They welded it up and then just covered it. So, whatever. I'm going to just keep stripping away. There's another little patch right here. Although I think most of that will get cut out, but I want to take it off just to make sure. I'm going to clean this weld up a little bit here. Uh, and yeah, kind of go back to as much of the original metal as I can. Here's a quick little tip. So my grinding disc, it's pretty wore out. It's starting to get really flimsy on the end. If you take a old pair of tin snips that you don't care about anymore, and kind of cut it, cut your disc into like a little star like that, you can get quite a few more miles out of it. Clean it up like that, hook it back up, and keep going. So I thought I was clever, and I took the frame rail, or the frame horn from that side, flipped it upside down on this side, and used that bolt hole, and put it in that bolt hole, so that I could find out where to mark this. Because, you know, when it's upside down like this, it's super easy to just take a thing like this. And that gives you your line. But before I did that, I measured it. So this little black dot that you probably can't see, that's supposed to be the axle center line. And from there to the back of the frame, it's supposed to be 28 inches. That's 29 inches. So then I thought, well... Maybe my mark here is wrong. So I looked at some other, some blueprints, and from the firewall mount, 
I put a bolt in there to the firewall mount to the back of the frame. Should be 102 inches. And this is 103 inches. So you're probably thinking, well, what does that mean? That means that the hole that I thought, remember a few minutes ago when I was like, this hole is this hole? This hole is not this hole. That hole's an inch off. So I'm not going to bolt this down. I'm going to unbolt it, slide it an inch up, and then make my mark. Then cut it off. And that should get us 102 inches or 28 inches from here. The cool part about that is every time I move this a little bit further forward, there is less and less crud damage in here that I have to worry about. If you're curious where I'm getting my dimensions from, let me show you here. If you go to, you know, like Westcott fiberglass bodies, if you go to Westcott's website, they have like a little tech section on there that has all the blueprints for, I think up till night from model eight to 1940. So super cool. I've been using their website to get all these dimensions for years. Thanks, Westcott. So after some careful measuring, I've got the line where we got it to cut. Uh, just like, I don't know if you guys all watched the video where I chopped the Model T behind us there, but I like to make my precision measurement layouts with masking tape and a pencil just to keep it like really precise. Sharpies sometimes get a bit fat. So I got both sides laid out. My measurement from the axle center line to where I cut is the same on both sides. And I've also checked from where my firewall mount is going back is the same on both sides. So I'm pretty confident that we're in the right spot right now. I got looking into it a little bit more because I was wondering like, why are these holes an inch off? And for starters, this side's not an inch off. This side is like a half an inch off. So they're not even the same length. And I got really looking into it and realized that these aren't even the original frame rails anymore. Somebody has spliced these on, which might explain why there's this weird little patch in there. So these holes are completely irrelevant to everything. So we're going to chop them off, weld those guys on, and then we'll be back to regular 32 Ford dimensions. Cool. That worked out really good. And by chopping all that crap off, I only have this much of that ugly patch left to remove, which I'm stoked about. So I'm going to do that now. Get this out of here. This side doesn't have one. There's a crack right here that needs to be welded up. I think that's where this, the old horns were, uh, frame horns were spliced on was right there. So when I, Get this out of here, and then I'll start welding these on, and I'll weld that up at the same time, and then probably put a fish plate or something in here. There's a lot of weight back here. These three holes here, that's what holds the gas tank in. So you have a whole tank of gas bouncing around back here, which is usually why these frames are cracked back here. And I never really thought about it before until I was over at my friend Bruce's place one time, and he's building... 32 right now and his back fenders are always he's got several sets of rear fenders and they're all cracked right there my fenders are cracked there as well and, and he was saying that's because as bouncing down the road as that frame starts to go like that the fenders go -chunk, and get a crack in them Okay, so I got the frame horn mocked up here. I think it's ready to weld. Uh, I took some straight edge, some two by three tubing, and clamped it to the previous frame rail and the new frame rail just to get them straight in line here. 
and it looks really good. There's a little bit of a weird spot here where that old patch used to be, um, but I'm pretty confident that this is straight with this. It's perfect with the good spot here. It's only in this little weird spot that that it's a little bit not perfect, but we can we can live with that. Uh, also, for the top to get the plane correct, I just took some tubing here and I got it clamped on there to give that a good straight profile or plane or whatever you want to call it. So I think I'm ready to tack this side in place and then we can start fitting that one. But I hear some rumbling coming. I think we might have a visitor. Dave Hargraves is here. Well, that was pretty cool of Dave to come hang out uh, after he left. I welded this up here. So I got another little tech tip. See like little spots like this where the end's kind of blowing away. There's another spot here where there was a weld there and a weld there. And it's not quite flush on the end. I don't know if you've ever tried to weld those up, but they can be very difficult because it just wants to keep blowing away. So if you take a piece of brass, I've just got this chunk of like 3 16 brass and you hold it on there, you can weld all that up and the brass will hold, like stop it from blowing through. But because it's brass, the weld actually doesn't stick to it. So when you're done welding that up, you just take the vice grips off, pull the brass off, and then you've got a nice buildup on there that you can take a grinder or two and finish. Uh, here's an example of where I did it on the bottom side here. I did that also when I was cleaning these front pieces up here. That's how I got this edge nice and crisp all the way along. It also works if you gotta like fill holes. Like if I wanted to weld this hole up right here, put the brass in behind it and then you can weld it all up and not worry about it blowing through. Both sides are all welded up now, and I've welded up just a couple little imperfection spots along there. So I'm ready to start grinding this out and making it look nice. But before I do that, I just want to say hi to Tucker. So I hope Tucker's watching this video. Tucker is the coolest little hot rod kid I know who watches all my videos. And just wanted to say hi to him. So look forward to the next time Tucker can come hang out and we can play with our Hot Wheels. So, hi, Tucker. I gotta get back to work now. I think that turned out pretty well. I'm happy with it. So I want to do some fish plates, but before I do the fish plates, I want to put the cross member back in because I don't want my fish plate to interfere with this at all. So we're going to put this back in and then I can make a template for the, the fish plates. One thing I wasn't really paying attention on when I was welding these on, there's a hole right here for this guy right there. And on this side, I welded that hole up. I was just welding this along and I was like, ah, I don't think that hole needs to be there anymore. And I welded it up and like 32 seconds later, I was like, oh man, that hole's for that. But we can, we can mark it out and re-drill it again. So we'll go ahead and get this guy in there. Hopefully it, uh, it was hard to get out. I think it's going to be hard to get back in. I need to be on the other side, I think. 
Okay, if we put that guy there, and this here, and push. Okay, that actually wasn't so bad. Okay, mm -hmm. rear cross member is bolted in, and I'm ready to make my fish plates. Almost. There's a couple things we gotta change, or not change, but just manipulate here. Let me grab the camera and I'll bring you in so you can take a look. <clears throat> so, these little guys here, they don't sit very nice. This one is almost touching down there, but there's a big gap up there. And this one has a really big gap. And I think the reason this has a really big gap is remember when I cut the old frame horn off, it had that big honking fish plate in there. I think this is being tweaked to accommodate that. So we gotta take this back out again, and I think we can manipulate these to fit. Basically my plan is to make a fish plate Oh, also, I'm going to get the gas tank. I'm going to dig it out of storage and bolt the gas tank back in. I don't think it interferes with this very much, if at all, but I want to make sure first. So we'll put the gas tank in, and kind of my plan is to make a fish plate probably from about here somewhere that goes all the way to the front of this cross member, at least on this side. This side already has a fish plate in there from a previous repair that I'm gonna leave. It was pretty well done and I'm happy with the way it is. I don't think I could do anything that would be an improvement on that. So this fish plate, I'm just gonna tie into the first fish plate. Um, but before I do that, I gotta eat some food because it is dinner time on Saturday and I am famished. So, I don't know about you guys, but when I start getting hungry, I start getting sloppy and cutting corners. So, I've started to, well, a long time ago, I decided that when I'm hungry, I just need to stop. So, we're going to stop this video now, and we'll continue on the next video with making the fish plates and finalizing this cross member. And then the chassis will be done. And then we can start putting this car back together. So, I want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure to like and comment. Tell me what you think about this project. Tell me what you guys are working on. What are you building at home? Uh, also, check out the website, lgspeedcustom.com. Uh, we got hot rod parts, hot rod shirts, stickers, all that stuff. Go check out the website. And if you like what we're doing and you want to support us, go grab a shirt. Uh, also, once again, thanks to the Cavaleros. Make sure you check out the Cavaleros website and grab a shirt from them. Get a CD or... Uh, Check them out wherever you stream music, the Cavaleros. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Bye.